Breaking on 4 News Now at 6, the push for more evidence why the defense team for the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students says the state needs to hand over more information. I'm tracking strong thunderstorms currently making their way into our area. I'll let you know where they're headed in the first alert forecast. Controversy at a Bonner County Commissioner meeting why one commissioner says public comment should no longer be allowed. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. We begin with that breaking news out of the Moscow murders case. The man accused of killing the four University of Idaho students last fall was back in court today. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. And I'm Aaron Luna. Now that the death penalty is on the table, the defense says the state needs to hand over more detailed information, especially about how investigators came to target Brian Koberger as a suspect. 4 News Now's Natalie Grant was in court today and is live at the home in Moscow where crews were removing more of the victim's personal items today. Natalie. Well, Aaron Kirsten, I'm outside the house here where those murders took place back in November. And as you can see behind me here, those trucks that we saw earlier are no longer in the driveway of the house. But meanwhile, just down the road, it was a quiet day in court. Koberger and his team only presenting three motions to compel before the judge asking the, de the defense to turn over more pieces of evidence before the trial starts this fall. Now, the first is, the, is training records from three officers that conducted interviews and gathered evidence in the hours and days following the murders, the defense saying due to their involvement, the officers are likely to be subpoenaed during the trial and they were and how they were trained is relevant information. These three officers are officers that have each conducted critical interviews with critical witnesses in the case, made decisions about the interviews, made decisions about evidence, and conducted other kinds of investigations. The state said it will only give over that information if those officers are called. Now, the second and thing that they're looking for is the FBI cell phone data that pinpointed the whereabouts of Koberger that night. And the third is a report from the FBI examiner that told police to look for the white Hyundai Elantra as a car of interest in this case. Now, the state says it shared all the information on their side regarding these regarding these two pieces and is waiting on the final report. Now, once those reports are done, the state says that they will be sharing them. And that's where things ended today in the courtroom. We were expected to hear other motions to be brought forward in regards to DNA that was collected, as well as information that was presented before a grand jury that led to Koberger's indictment. Now, according to Idaho court officials, the two sides did come to an agreement this morning before court started, and the motion surrounding the DNA will be heard at a later date. Koberger's trial is set to begin in October. Reporting in Moscow, Idaho, Natalie Grant, 4 News Now. Natalie, thank you. Well, another round of thunderstorms currently making their way through the inland northwest. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker to see where they're headed. Well, the strongest storms across the region right now are just north of I-90 across parts of northern, or, yes, northern Spokane County, southern Stevens County, and into northern Lincoln County. These storms are slow movers, putting down torrential rain. We have had some reports of some large hail with some of these storms, up to seven-tenths of an inch in diameter, as well as frequent Cloud to ground lightning, gusty winds in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range are also possible with these storms. Some of the strongest storms right now just south of Deer Park moving to the west southwest through the Suncrest area. We also um, have some storms further to the west. Let's zoom in on this system. However, we are looking just uh, to the south of the Deer Park area and again moving to the west. We have a storm that has been weakened as it moves to the south just uh, over the Kootenai Spokane County line uh, near Blanchard there and of course Long Lake just north of Long Lake we have some thunderstorm activity producing some hail temperatures around the region have cooled considerably where we've had some thunderstorms Spirit Lake it's only 69 at 68 degrees in Coeur d'Alene further to the west we're still in the 80s at Fairchild Air Force Base Spokane International and downtown however rain cooled 77 in Deer Park your forecast for this evening, the possibility of isolated thunderstorms right
right on through the evening. We'll be cooling down into the 60s by 11 o'clock. I'll take you through hour by hour with our computer model forecast and tell you about some hot weather on the way for 4th of July in just a few minutes, Aaron. Thank you, Chris. In our fire watch coverage tonight, fire crews are battling a wildfire burning just outside of Wenatchee. People living in the hillside neighborhood are being track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. 4 News Now. Expect more on air, online, and on the app. Alabama Roll On North America Tour presented by Kenworth. Song of the South. Sweet potato. July 6th, Spokane Arena. Baby. With very special guest, the Marshall Tucker Band, Alabama, live. All your favorite songs from the greatest country band of all time. To a, a, the group of kids fighting at this park. They said that the gunshot was fired, but thankfully no one was injured. But they said uh, this type of incident has been ongoing issue at the city parks. I spoke to Anya Peace from Human Rights Commission today, and he tells me uh, that he's, he's against this ordinance because it could be a prison pipeline for teens. It doesn't actually alleviate any of the issues that uh, were described uh, by the police department that uh, necessitated this ordinance. Anwar Peace serves as chair of a Human Rights Commission in Spokane. He pointed out teens could be drastically impacted by this ordinance, and he says making the public face misdemeanors is not the way to protect the city parks. Now we've got a rotating situation where this juvenile has a criminal track record. Um, might that might affect his school it might affect his home life and it might deteriorate to a point where he does actually engage in criminal activity that we don't want to see. He says this ordinance also targets the homeless population, removing public spaces as options for them to take shelter. We've had a number of incidents in the last year, um, uh, violent incidents in city parks, specifically after hours, incidents where shots have been fired and where people have been struck. Spoken police say the goal is to eliminate dangerous behaviors that could lead to violence at the parks. They say they need this ordinance to do it. We need that tool and that ability to communicate to folks that the type of behavior that we are trying to alleviate is not acceptable. The question is, what type of circumstances officers will be on the lookout for? He says when they see a large congregation after hours, drug and alcohol use, and when weapons are present. How it looks for our enforcement will be data driven. So when we need it, where we need it, um, my guess is that we will have some emphasis emphasis patrols initially after it is it is um, it goes into law. Uh and the Spokane police say they already have, have already begun educating the public about the changes uh, in the park hours and they will continue to do so. And this new law will take into effect 30 days after the city mayor signs the ordinance. Live in Spokane, Peter Choi, 4 News Shop. Back to you guys. Peter, thank you. A man living near Deer Park surrendered peacefully to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office following an hour-long standoff today. It all happened near West Hamilton Road and North Short Road, that's south of Deer Park. Sheriff's deputies say the man's family called saying he was intoxicated and threatening to kill himself with a gun. Investigators say he wanted deputies to end his life and because there were children in the house at the time, SWAT and the crisis negotiation team were called in. They were able to de-escalate the situation and the man was taken to the hospital for treatment. As of now, the man is not facing any charges. This is just one of the many times the SWAT team has been called out this year. As of June 5th, the SWAT team has been activated 25 times. Last year, they were called 47 times. That's the most times in the last five years. In my special report, we explore the reasons behind the rising calls and the new technology used to end these situations peacefully. Be sure to watch this Thursday on 4 News Now at 6. A local church vandalized for showing its support for the LGBTQ plus community. The threatening message left behind coming up. Plus, the warning from the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office for anyone planning on going to North Idaho for the 4th of July. That's coming up. Track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. 4 News Now. Expect more on air, online, and on the app. Alabama. Roll on North America Tour. Presented by Kenworth. Song of the South. 
sweet potato. July 6th, Spokane Arena. Baby, with very special guest, the Marshall Tucker Band. Like Alabama, live. All your favorite songs from the greatest country band of all time. Roll on, Daddy, till you get back home. On sale now at ticketswest.com. You gotta have a fiddle in Produced by Outback Presents. This week, Walker's Furniture is combining their anniversary sale with their 4th of July sale for double the discounts. Where the more you spend, the more you save. Up to $760 off. Or you can take advantage of special five years no interest financing with no money down. So you can get that new living room furniture or stylish bedroom set you've been wanting and pay for it later. Making it the perfect time to furnish your life for less. During the 43rd 4th of July sale at Walker's. Get $200 when you open a new checking account with Horizon Credit Union. When you bank with us, you'll get expert guides to help you on your financial journey, a pathfinder, an advisor, a teammate, a guardian, and peace of mind wherever you're headed next. So if you're ready for a better banking experience, sign up in branch or online with the promo code GET200. Horizon Credit Union, your path, our purpose. My name is Steven, and this is my Summit Cancer Center story. I had a large tumor in my left lung in November of 2018. We went through in 2020 doing a lot of end-of-life planning. Summit was very aggressive in my treatment of diagnosis. Since then, with my recovery, we're doing a lot of life events. I love the people there. I would recommend Summit Cancer Center. My wife calls it a miracle. The Spokane County SWAT team, they're being deployed more often, on average once a week. Manpower going in there and just, you know, sending troops in the door. 4 News Now wanted to know why. It's not like we used to think back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. What do they have that other law enforcement agencies don't? And how does new technology help them protect you? You were saying it's going to be a game changer. Why is that? Aaron Luna reports. Thursday only on 4 News Now at 6. The former girlfriend of the man accused of shooting and killing two women at the Gorge is speaking out after spending days in the hospital recovering. Como's Hannah Knowles has more. It's shocking and overwhelming and very scary. Described as a one of a kind, 20 year old Lily Luxick has a long road ahead of her. She's very special and that combination of fierceness and stubbornness and sweetness and intelligence, uh, there's nobody like her. Lily was with her former boyfriend, James Kelly, the night he pulled the trigger at an EDM festival at the Gorge Amphitheater. Prosecutors say she tried to call 911, and that's when Kelly grabbed her phone, took her into a field, and ultimately shot her twice in the legs. It is doubtful that she'll be able to pursue um, pole vaulting in the way that she had in the past. A star on the track, Lily is an avid athlete. She pole vaulted for Pacific Lutheran University and is loved by many. She's starting to smile and, and laugh a little bit. It's been, um, it's been amazing to see that resiliency. Part of the healing process for others is remembering the two who were killed that day, Jocelyn and Brandy. If you just see them together, you'll see the love in their eyes, how, how they shine each other. And that's, that's how I want to remember them. The pair met more than a decade ago and had just moved to Seattle as many leave candles and notes for the two lost souls. I don't see how any one of them would have continued to live life and to be happy as they were without each other. Watching a line of thunderstorms from northeastern parts of Spokane County through the Deer Park and Suncrest area all the way down into parts of Lincoln County tonight. They're moving to the west. I'll let you know if they're going to impact Spokane after the break. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by the Coeur d'Alene Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's time. Time to let your soul breathe a little, to feel the sun on your face, and to feel alive again. It's time to dust off the clubs, to treat yourself, and test out your lungs. It's time to get away to the place that's not so far away, Lakeside Coeur d'Alene. 
Find countless ways to play and stay in CDA at visitcda.org. This summer, GMA's popping up all across the country, spreading sunshine and summertime fun in the morning. It's GMA's Rise and Shine Summer Tour. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. So, could we be coming to your hometown? People who come to the Inland Northwest rave about its beauty. For those of us who live and work here, we couldn't agree more. From its iconic history to a ton of new beginnings, we have farm to table roots and access to nature right at our back door. And as a community member, BECU wants to honor those who work together to make life better for our region. Join us for the premier food and drink celebration, Crave, at the Spokane Valley Center Place, July 13th through the 15th. Proudly sponsored by BECU. One of the Inland Northwest's most extraordinary four-wheel beasts, the Honda SUV thrives in a diverse habitat. Equally comfortable in rugged terrain or roaming city streets at night, it can travel hundreds of miles on a small amount of fuel. Fiercely protective of its young, the Honda SUV is known by its distinctive markings, CRV, Pilot, and Passport, and can live happily for decades in any garage or driveway. Catch one now at your Inland Northwest Honda dealer. Honda can handle it. Get your home summer ready and take advantage of some big savings. At Ironstone Furniture and Fire, you can create your outdoor space and save on in-stock selections of barbecues, outdoor furniture, fire pits, and more. Everything you need to enjoy the outdoors with family and friends. Visit our showroom, Ironstone Furniture and Fire in Coeur d'Alene. Busy afternoon and evening of tracking thunderstorms in Coeur d'Alene. It is rain right now and 68 degrees. The roads are wet along I-90, although the traffic is moving along better than it was. But here's the view looking to the west-southwest from downtown Spokane where it's dry. We've got some clearing. Look further to the north and the clouds get quite a bit darker. It's still 81 degrees. It's amazing how much we cool down with that rain. Uh, we're zoomed in on Doppler radar right now. Here's Coeur d'Alene with that very, very light rain, but we're watching this line of thunderstorms that are now moving almost uh, directly to the west, a little bit of a southwest movement to them, and they're moving very slowly at only at about 10 miles per hour, putting down very heavy rain. Uh, they also have the potential for producing up to penny size hail as well as 40 mile per hour wind gusts as they move uh, really toward Lincoln County. We have some additional thunderstorm development to our north, but boy, at their current trajectory may almost miss the Spokane area. Computer model uh, thinks it may be more of a direct hit. We're starting off at 7 o'clock tonight uh, with that thunderstorm sinking further to the south and then impacting Spokane through about 10 o'clock tonight. I'm not sure that we're not going to just miss all of this wet weather just to our north in terms of downtown Spokane. Here's midnight with things drying out keeping that chance of showers and thunderstorms to our east or west rather. Let's take a broader view here. Forecast radar starting off at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We are dry with some sunshine, but still some lingering showers down on the Palouse and into the LC Valley. Once we get into tomorrow afternoon, we could see a little bit of convection refiring, but nowhere near as widespread as what we've seen today. And then we are be, will be drying out as we get into Thursday. Overnight lows tonight will be down in the 50s and 60s around the region. High temperatures Wednesday, once again, running above average. Our average highs in the 70s will be in the 80s in most locations, even the 90s for Lewiston, Moses Lake, Grand Coulee, and OMAC. 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms Wednesday. We're warmer, drier, sunnier on Thursday, then into the 90s for Friday and Saturday. Staying in the 90s for Monday, Pretty good looking 4th of July, sunny and 92 degrees. Above average to be sure, but we've had hotter 4th of July weekends. Overnight lows will be in the 50s and 60s. Some good camping weather, good time to remind you to be extra careful with fire this weekend and 
always, because things are extremely dry this season. Aaron? That is a good reminder. Thank you, Chris. As the U.S. continues to grapple with severe storms and excessive heat, the economy is starting to feel the impacts. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the average number of extreme weather events with billion-dollar losses has skyrocketed in just the last five years. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez is breaking down the numbers and explains what it could mean for your wallet. Severe storms and excessive heat continue to hammer much of the country. In the last two weeks, we've seen a dramatic increase in call volume for heat-related emergencies. And the extreme weather is taking a toll on the economy and your wallets. According to NOAA, as of June 8th, there have been nine confirmed U.S. weather and climate disaster events this year, with losses exceeding $1 billion. One industry taking a huge hit, airlines. More than 5,000 flights across the United States were delayed or canceled Monday as powerful storms ripped through parts of the country. I'm just hoping and praying we don't have to deal with it, but we're, we're ready if we do. The Federal Aviation Administration estimated the cost of airline backups to be about $33 billion in 2019. Other sectors feeling the brunt, tourism, agriculture, and construction. For consumers, the rising temperatures means higher summer utility costs. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, average electricity prices are expected to rise about 2% from last year. Flood and home insurance rates are also on the rise. Experts fear the cost of insurance will only get worse as climate change intensifies both hurricanes and extreme rain events. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. We'll still ahead how a new federal law could make your pregnancy a little easier. And still preparing for the 4th, we'll show you where to catch the nearest fireworks celebration. Plus, a new audio recording could play a major role in the Department of Justice's case against former President Donald Trump. The Trump campaign reaction next on 4 News Now at 6. Download the 4 News Now app today. Set your summer off at Northern Quest's annual 4th of July celebration with local food trucks, live music, kids' activities, and one unforgettable fireworks display. Festivities start at 4, fireworks at 10. Details at northernquest.com. Home. It's both a place and a feeling. At yours, you strive to make new memories, create traditions, share stories, find the fun, Embrace the surprises and celebrate moments big and small. Memories are made at home, in every room, in every moment. Make your house feel like home at the Tin Roof. What's in a name? A question that has never had more relevance. First American Title has been rebranded to Flying S, Title and Escrow. Since 1905, we've been helping people protect their property rights. When the time comes to choose a title insurance and escrow company, the choice is clear. Flying S, Title and Escrow. Idaho's longest operating, family-owned title and escrow company is now Flying S, Title and Escrow. We're not new, but our name is. Welcome to Celebrity Family Feud, everybody. I'm your man, Steve Harvey. the body what they're gonna put in the cask a horse let's go <laughs> celebrity family feud premieres sunday july 9th on abc and stream on hulu my parents started their first dealership in Coeur d'Alene in 1983. They took pride in being locally owned and work hard to help this great community we call home. Now, three generations later, we're still proud to be one of the last locally owned Subaru dealerships. And we're working harder than ever to give back to the community that has supported us all these years. Because we're looking forward to being your local family Subaru dealer for generations to come. If you have a fear of missing out, you might want to start earning with a free Camus Rewards card because, dude, Camus Rewards at Northern Quest for all the ways you play. Is it your day to water? Know if you are odd or even and be water wise this summer. 
Well, don't come to Kootenai County on vacation and leave on probation. Sheriff Robert Norris is sending a clear message ahead of 4th of July celebrations. He claims a large number of people from Washington spend time in jail this holiday and say drugs and criminals will not be tolerated. Vanessa Perez has why some people don't think his message is doing much. I spoke to believe the drug problem is complex and those issues aren't just coming from people traveling from Washington. The Kootenai County Sheriff is sending a message to who he calls Washington criminals. While Sheriff Norris welcomes law-abiding Washingtonians, criminals and drug users are not invited. His message has people like Betty Harper raising questions. How is he going to stop them? You're going to stop everybody that comes on the street. Are you from Washington? Did you bring your marijuana with you? Laws are different in Idaho. Using hard drugs like fentanyl, meth, and cocaine are serious felonies and can land people in jail. Marijuana is also illegal in the state. Harper says drugs can cause a handful of problems, but feels like it can't be stopped. Hey, I agree with him. We don't need a lot of the drug stuff. That's true. We don't. True. But are you going to be able to stop it? Do you know how many people in this area right here? There's a few people. I'll bet you find at least two that are either smoking, dead, going to. Harper says people can only control themselves. Nora said in a statement, quote, if one chooses to possess controlled substances or engage in any criminal behavior, Seattle, Spokane, and the entire state of Washington is a wonderful place to enjoy July 4th celebrations. Sherry Schaefer lives in Spokane and feels like the statement targets all Washingtonians. I would disagree with labeling Washingtonians as, you know, using drugs. I mean, not obviously not everyone is, you know, using any kind of drugs. She does agree that those not following the law should be pursued. Reporting in Kootenai County, Vanessa Perez, 4 News Now. Personal fireworks are illegal, but there are still plenty of local fireworks shows in Spokane for you and your family to enjoy. In Spokane County, there will be shows at Riverfront Park, Avista Stadium, and at Liberty Lake Pavilion Park. And in Kootenai County, the Coeur d'Alene annual 4th of July party starts at 10 a.m. with the American Heroes Parade. Later that night, you can catch the fireworks show right near the resort. I want to update you on a severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued for the area shaded in orange on your screen. That does include the Nine Mile area, Suncrest, Tum Tum, Welpinit, Ford. These storms are capable of producing up to 60 mile per hour gusts as well as quarter size hail. This severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 7 o'clock tonight. The general movement with these storms is to the west southwest. They are moving very slowly, only at about 10 miles per hour. I'll have an update for you at the bottom of the hour. Kirsten. Thank you, Chris. Well, a new federal law is now in effect that's meant to make pregnant women who are working their lives a little easier. It's part of the Pregnant Worker Fairness Act and it impacts companies with 15 or more employees. The new law further strengthens federal laws concerning pregnant employees. It also treats all pregnancies the same, high risk or not. We have federal and state disability laws that say if you've got a disability, which sometimes pregnancy is, uh, then you get reasonable accommodations. But what we didn't have was a law that said pregnant workers who don't have a disability pregnancy, they have a run-of-the-mill pregnancy, they also need accommodations. That's what this new law fixes. Those accommodations can range from changing a work schedule if someone has severe morning sickness, for example, or giving them a closer parking lot if needed and more flexible work hours. There's a consumer alert. You may want to check your freezer for frozen organic pineapple. Scenic Fruit Company says its organic tropical fruit blend with pineapple has the potential to be contaminated, which can cause or contaminated with listeria, which can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, the elderly and those with weakened immune systems. This recall is related to similar recalls with other frozen fruit products. Around the nation tonight, a newly released audio recording taken of former President Donald Trump could play an important role in the Justice Department's investigation into how Mr. Trump handled government documents after leaving office. The two-minute recording comes from a July 2021 interview Mr. Trump gave for people working on the memoir of his former chief of staff. The special counsel's indictment alleges those in attendance, a writer, publisher, and two of Mr. Trump's staff members, were shown classified information 
information about the plan of attack on Iran. Take a listen. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. But look, look at this. You attack and... Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. According to CNN, the former president was aware he was being recorded at the time. The audio undercuts Mr. Trump's claim that he was only discussing newspaper articles and that he had only kept papers that were previously declassified. In response to the recording, Mr. Trump's campaign is claiming the former president was, quote, speaking rhetorically in the recordings. Still ahead, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students back in court. Why his lawyers are pushing for more information from the state. That's coming up. And citizens of an Idaho county are outraged after a commissioner suspended public comments at meetings. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. Now a joke from York's Fresh Murder. What did the tomato say to his son when they were racing? Catch up! <laughs> Injured in a car, truck, or motorcycle wreck? Call Russell and Hill, Attorneys at Law, where real people with real injuries get real results. 24 7, nights and weekends. Free consultations. And there's never a fee unless we win. Choose two. Choose Russell and Hill. Be advised. This is a once in a lifetime chance to save 40 to 80% on a hot tub and swim spa. Friday through Tuesday. Major manufacturers and warehouses clearance of new 2023 inventory. Spokane County Fair and Expo Center. Over 100 hot tubs on display and everything must go. See the revolutionary swim spa. You can exercise, swim, and relax without the expense and maintenance of a pool. Hot tubs starting at $29.95. All inventory 40 to 80% off. 18 month interest free financing. Trade ins welcome. Free delivery. We'll even haul away your old hot tub. Spokane County Fair and Expo Center. Free admission. Free parking. Call 833 Spa Sale. How far would you go? I want to prank my best friend, Lewis. My husband. My roommate. For the ultimate payback. Oh! That's a yes. Revenge. Let's go give it to you. 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 Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Johnny Knoxville, Eric Andre, and Gabrielle Sidibe are... <laughs> the Prank Battle premieres July 9th on ABC. I'm Mark Peterson with information from AARP and BECU. What images come to mind when you hear the phrase long-term care? It comes in many forms, whether it's assisted living, home health care, chores, or just providing transportation for appointments. Washington State ranks second in the nation when it comes to choices and options for long-term care, allowing older adults to live independently in their own homes, where they want to be. AARP and BECU are here to help you plan for your future care needs. For tips, tools, and resources, visit this website. joke from Yolk's Fresh Market. Why is a hamburger so lucky? Because it's on a roll. <laughs> Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. We are continuing to follow breaking news on the Moscow murders case. The defense says the state needs to hand over more detailed information on how the death penalty, now that the death penalty is on the table. The defense specifically wanting to know how investigators managed to connect Brian Koberger to the crime. That was just one of three hearings that took place today. Our Natalie Grant is live in Moscow tonight with what else happened in court. Well, Aaron Kirsten, I'm outside here of the house where these murders took place back in November. And just down the road, a man who was accused of those murders was back in court today. His team asking the judge to compel the defense to hand over some information they say is crucial to preparing for the trial, which is happening in November. Now, the first that they were asking for is training records from three officers that conducted interviews and gathered evidence in the hours and days following the murders. The defense saying due to their involvement, the officers are likely to be subpoenaed during the trial and how they were trained is relevant information. The state says they will only be giving over that information once the officers are called. There is a lot of information in the various interviews that that's going to come into trial. This officer may well be subpoenaed by the defense 
come to trial. That person's training records are very now, the second hearing is about FBI cell phone data that that pinpointed the whereabouts of Koberger that night. And the third is a report from the FBI examiner that told police to look for that white Hyundai Elantra as a car of interest in this case. Now, the state says it has shared all the information on their side regarding these two pieces of evidence and is waiting on final reports to be done. And once those reports are done, the state says that it will be sharing them. And that's where things ended today in the courtroom. We were expecting other motions to be brought forward in regards to DNA that was collected, as well as the information that was presented before the grand jury that led to Koberger's indictment. Now, according to Idaho court officials, they say that the two sides were able to come to a compromise before the court before court started earlier today, and the motion surrounding the DNA will be heard at a later time. And again, Koberger's trial does start later this year in October. Reporting in Moscow, Idaho, Natalie Grant, 4 News Now. Severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect until 7 o'clock this evening. For this area shaded in orange on your screen, that does include the Nine Mile area as well as Tum Tum, Ford, Welpinit. We have some areas of strong thunderstorm activity outside of this box, however, and the general movement is going to the west southwest. However, you'll notice that we are also starting to see some development uh, further to the south in the Spokane area. We're watching this area of thunderstorms south of Green Bluff moving into Orchard Prairie could be impacting the Hilliard area here in the next 20 minutes to half an hour. Uh, it has also been a noisy day up along the North Division Y. Meanwhile, it's mostly just some light rain right now around Coeur d'Alene. For your Wednesday planner, expect a mix of sun and clouds. Actually, it's going to be a day very much like today, starting off in the 50s, heading to a high of 85. 77 is our average high. We will not see as widespread a thunderstorm activity in the afternoon and evening, but there is still the possibility of some convection. The latter part of the day, I'll be back with your seven-day forecast. Quieter weather, but also hotter weather on on the way for the holiday weekend. I'll have an update on that severe thunderstorm warning as well. Kirsten. Thank you, Chris. New at 630. Censorship. I believe this would be the greatest act of censorship there is. That's what one person attending today's Bonner County Commissioner meeting had to say after County Commissioner Stephen Bradshaw motioned to stop all public comment during these meetings. From there, Commissioner Asia Williams and Commissioner Bradshaw went back and forth in disagreement about public comment. When during the meeting, Sandpoint PD was also called. Tonight at 6.30, Bronte Soratsky has the details on today's meeting. Well, as soon as Commissioner Bradshaw motioned to end all public comment during meetings, he was met with opposition from both the public and a fellow commissioner. Censorship, I believe this would be the greatest act of censorship there is. That was one reaction as Bonner County Commissioner Stephen Bradshaw announced an end to public comments at commissioner meetings until a later date. His reasoning, he said public comment has become a quote mockery for the county. And until I can be convinced that people will behave and act like adults, we will no longer have public comment in our business meetings. But Commissioner Asia Williams strongly disagreed, voicing concern. It is important for us to not allow the door to be closed on the public. Um, and if you guys don't take action on this, it's, it's to the detriment of the public. Commissioner Williams says they have an increased participation in meetings, giving a voice to those that aren't usually heard from. To deny the public that is not representing it. What it really is, is you're shutting the door on the voice that you don't want to hear. And that is not how government is supposed to work. As the meeting progressed, it only got more contentious. What it's is happening? Mr. Chairman, you know you know can we get We will recess this up. meeting right now for 10 minutes and we will... <clears throat> You're going Both to take a the break others. every time you're held accountable. And After that break, Commissioner Williams called for a vote on Commissioner Bradshaw's decision to deny public comment. After our items, that was At a decision. At the discretion of the chair, thank you very much. Miss, I'm not sure why you're doing this, but we have asked for that. So are you saying that you're going to deny my, so I'll change it to a, I'm appealing your decision to deny the comment, which requires a vote. That motion failed two to one. I reached out to all three commissioners on when any of this could be implemented. None were available for comment. In studio, Bronte Sorotsky, 4 News Now. 
In honor of Pride Month, many businesses are decorating to show their support. One Spokane Valley Church showing support was surprised to find vandalism in place of Pride flags. Our reporter, Allison Martinez, has more. Last week, Veradale United Church of Christ was covered with over 25 pride flags. Now the entrance stands empty and a threatening message was left in place. There's been a lot of tears, um, not only here in our congregation, but in others. According to Reverend Genevieve Haywood, last weekend three people stole three large banners and 25 small pride flags from the property at one in the morning. They also spelled out LEV 2013 on the front lawn using diesel fuel, referencing a verse often used to condemn gay people. You go into a um, mama bear kind of mode, take care of the congregation, take care of the property, take care of the neighbors. So. That's where my mind went first. Haywood says she contacted Spokane Valley Police who are currently investigating and have to find the crime with vandalism and theft. Haywood believes the incident carries much more weight. What I'm reading says that this does count as hate crime especially because they've chosen the Bible verse they've chosen. Veradale United Church of Christ has decided that while they don't have control over the incident, they can control their response. The church is hosting a potluck and dance event this coming Sunday. So we'll share our tears, we'll share some laughter. I'm being told maybe we don't have enough room for dancing, but it could happen. If you're happy, I don't I just want to share the joy that comes with love that overcomes hate. The Love is Greater Than Hate flash ball, potluck, and dance will take place Sunday from noon to 3 p.m. at Veradale United Church of Christ. Reporting from Spokane Valley, Allison Martinez, 4 News Now. A pair of baseball players will represent the Inland Northwest at MLB All-Star Week in Seattle. Why they could be making the big leagues in the near future. That's coming up in sports. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Jacobs Custom Living. Wildfire season is here and we may be affected by smoke. Protect your health by being prepared. 1. Check current air quality and fire activity online and plan accordingly. 2. When it's smoky, limit or avoid time outdoors. And 3. Keep indoor air as clean as possible. Replace home air filters more often and set the air conditioner to the recirculate mode. For the latest information about wildfires and air quality, visit the Washington Smoke Blog, wasmoke.blogspot.com. This is your summer to smile, to raise your glass and reconnect, to reel in the fun and serve up great times. To help you get ready, your Aspen Dental Team is celebrating 25 years of affordable care with an epic Summer of Smiles event. Right now, new patients without insurance get a free full exam and x-rays. Plus, everyone can get 20% off their treatment plan. But hurry, because while these summer savings won't last, the memories you make together will. Aspen Dental. Book today. County SWAT team. They're being deployed more often, on average once a week. Manpower going in there and just, you know, sending troops in the door. 4 News Now wanted to know why. It's not like we used to think back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. What do they have that other law enforcement agencies don't? And how does new technology help them protect you? You were saying it's going to be a game changer. Why is that? Aaron Luna reports. Thursday only on 4 News Now at 6. 22 years ago, this nurse helped deliver a beautiful baby girl. You'll never guess who she turned out to be. Her daughter-in-law. Next, Inside Edition, what are the odds? I said, oh yeah, I remember that. She brought her future daughter-in-law into the world. Then, the Indiana Jones-Joe Biden connection. Can they convince Americans to vote for an 80-year-old man, just like action hero Harrison Ford? Next, Inside Edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. 
Well, let's take a look at our radar right off the bat because we are tracking a number of thunderstorms moving through the region. Most of the activity down by the Oregon border south of Lewiston is tapering off a little bit and moving to the south. But we have got some thunderstorms mainly north of I-90 right now. Uh, strong and even severe storms will zoom in here. And actually, the severe thunderstorm warning that was set to expire at 7 o'clock tonight I believe has been lifted. We'll take a closer look in just a minute. But these are the storms that have been the most cantankerous today, producing up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts, quarter size hail, very heavy rain, uh, as well as cloud to ground lightning. We have some weaker storms up through parts of Bonner and Boundary County, although right up along the Canadian border, uh, a stronger storm in progress. Let's zoom in here on this area area of thunderstorm activity that we've been watching uh, that is moving almost directly to the west, but enough of a southerly component that may be again to impact uh, Highway 2 in the sh uh, near future as this system has again a little bit of a southerly track to it. You'll notice we have a radar hole right around uh, the Rambo Road site there out in Airway Heights. Uh, so that is why it becomes a little bit scattered right there. Unfortunately, our radar is unable to pick up thunderstorm activity right near the site. Let's zoom in a little bit. The severe thunderstorm warning has been allowed to expire early. Again, it was set to expire at 7. They have canceled it. But we do have some flood advisories because one of the major concerns with these storms is they are slow moving and putting down very, very heavy rain. These are in effect until 9.15 tonight for some flash flooding. We'll zoom in a little bit closer to the Spokane area and see that we do have some rain and some isolated areas of heavier precipitation. Could hear some rumbles of thunder right on through the evening and even as late as midnight. Let's take a look at our forecast radar starting off at our current time. Those storms sinking to the south but weakening as we lose our daytime heating and a lot of the energy of the atmosphere to 2 a.m. keeping a chance of some thunderstorms to the west of the Spokane area. A sprinkle or two possible 6 a.m. We are mostly dry and may see some mountain thunderstorms redevelop. I've got a 20% chance for tomorrow. I think that might even be a little on the high side. Then we are into the sunshine and the 90s. A very summery 4th of July long weekend. Enjoy your camping trip. Enjoy your weekend at the lake. Enjoy hanging around Spokane. You may need to find some air conditioning. And uh, these thunderstorms will be wrapping up soon, Kirsten. Thank you, Chris, for the update. New at 630, the Supreme Court has ruled on a case that could have changed state election laws nationwide. Well, the justices ruled that North Carolina's Supreme Court did not overstep its bounds in striking down a congressional districting plan as excessively partisan under state law. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Some experts say this issue gets to the very core of what it is to have a free election. It decides who oversees elections and whether that authority has limits. The justices declined to invoke the so-called independent state legislature theory, which would leave state legislatures virtually unchecked by their state courts when dealing with federal elections. However, the high court did suggest there could be limits on state court efforts to police those elections. The theory, which is backed by a group of conservative advocates, argues that state lawmakers should have the ultimate power to regulate federal elections. Experts say in its most extreme form, the theory could have a dramatic impact on how congressional maps are drawn and how voting rules are written. Adding the theory could undermine how American democracy works now, raising concerns about what it could mean for how the 2024 presidential race and other contests are run. ABC's Terry Moran breaking down this major decision. The Supreme Court in a six to three opinion, rejecting the idea that state legislatures alone have unfettered power to decide how and when and in what manner elections are conducted, the so-called independent state legislature theory. Another redistricting case from Ohio is currently pending if the justices have more to say about the issue before next year's elections. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.
Here's a look at ABC's primetime lineup tonight. We have Celebrity Wheel of Fortune at 8, then Celebrity Jeopardy at 9, and Claim to Fame at 10. Download the 4 News Now app today. This may look like an action adventure movie, but it's a Nissan sales event ad. Get 0% financing for 36 months on select Rogue trims. These epic offers won't last forever. Fred's 4th of July sale is on now. Get the best buy of the year on Samsung laundry sets. Fred's has this Samsung laundry set marked down to only $7.29 each. Save $400 on the set. Or save 30% on this Samsung front load laundry set. Fred's has front load laundry sets in stock and on sale. Nobody has the selection you'll see with one stop at Fred's Appliance. Fred's 4th of July sale is on now. You don't want to miss this sale. Spokane's hottest music. Break me for so done with you, girl. Hot 96.9. Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning is your family-owned and operated number one HVAC contractor in the Northwest. Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning would like to introduce our own carbon reduction program. Buy a new energy-efficient furnace from Bill's Heating and receive a heat pump with installation absolutely free. No hidden fees, no conditions, no exceptions. Buy a furnace, get a free heat pump from Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. Call today for estimates and repairs. The Spokane County SWAT team, they're being deployed more often, on average once a week. 4 News Now wanted to know why and how does new technology help them protect you? Aaron Luna reports, Thursday only on 4 News Now at 6. Save thousands on the new Revolutionary Swim Spa at a one-time sale. Friday through Tuesday. Spokane County Fair and Expo Center. Exercise with low impact. Swim the entire year and stay in shape. Teach your kids to swim. Unwind and save thousands. Avoid the expense and maintenance involved with a pool. Swim, exercise, and relax in your new aquatic exercise swim spa. Installation and one day only. New 2023 inventory. 18-month interest-free financing. Millions of dollars of inventory must be sold. Spokane County Fair and Expo Center. Free admission. Free parking. Call 833-SPA-SALE. This may look like an action adventure movie, but it's a Nissan sales event ad. Get 0% financing for 36 months on select Rogue trims. These epic offers won't last forever. 4 News Now is brought to you by Circling Raven Golf Club. Well, it's an exciting time for Idaho athletics. Welcome into sports. I'm Julian Minnesota. The University of Idaho has been making headlines of late. It was a major sponsor at Hoop Fest over the weekend. The school also announced a name change to its football facility, a name change that will bring in $5 million over the next 10 years, not including advertising and other promotions. The university is also a host for the first and second rounds of the NCAA men's basketball tournament at Spokane Arena next year and the women's tournament in 2020. Athletic Director Terry Golick says the goal is for Idaho to have a heavy presence in Spokane. It's a recruiting spot for us for all our sports. You know, it's an hour and a half, two hours away. As I said, great camaraderie between us and the city, and we'll do as much as we can, even, even though it's in the state of Washington. The tickets for the NCAA tournament will go on sale in October. The naming rights deal between P1FCU, the credit union, and the University of Idaho begins next month. The best players in baseball will be in Seattle for next month's All-Star Game. It's the first time in 22 years Seattle will host the event. And the week of festivities will also feature baseball's best rising stars in the Futures Game. And there are a few inland Northwest athletes who will be front and center. Former Washington State and Lake City High School school star Kyle Manzardo was selected to play in the Futures game. Manzardo was the second round draft pick by the Tampa Bay Rays in 2021. He's hit 10 home runs for his AAA team in Durham, North Carolina this season. Former Spokane Indians outfielder Yankel Fernandez also made the Futures game. Fernandez hit 17 home runs for the Indians before being promoted to double-A ball. The MLB Futures game is at 4 o'clock on July 8th at T-Mobile Park. 
Park in Seattle. The Seattle Kraken made a lot of noise in its second season in franchise history. An unlikely trip to the playoffs raised the expectation level for year three. The Kraken schedule has been announced for next season and it is filled with marquee matchups. Seattle opens the season on October 10th on the road against the Stanley Cup champion Las Vegas Golden Knights. The team's first home game is October 17th against the Colorado Avalanche. The Kraken defeated the Avalanche in the first round of the playoffs this past season. Now Seattle's first homestand features three games against playoff teams, Colorado, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the New York Rangers. Now the Kraken and defending champion Golden Knights also face off in Seattle on New Year's Day as the Kraken will host the Winter Classic, a hockey outdoors game at T-Mobile Park. Should be a lot of fun. Now there is also an affordable option for families this season for tickets. The team is introducing family ticket bundles, which includes four tickets to a game, four hot dogs, and a box of popcorn for $150 or $250, depending on the seats. These bundles will be available for 10 games throughout the season and go on sale August 1st. And that'll wrap us up for sports. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. Next, E.T. and HGTV Couples Home Tour. Welcome in. Christina and Josh Hall spill the E.T. Do you actually enjoy being on camera? Uh, the short answer is no. Next, E.T. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. Weeknights on MeTV. Watch Andy Griffith at 8, The Beverly Hillbillies at 9, and Green Acres at 9.30. You can find MeTV on broadcast channels KXLY 4.2, Comcast 114, and Spectrum 9, 17, and 181. Why not have the bath of your dreams? With Bath Planet, you can once again relax and enjoy the beauty of your new shower and bath. Our custom-built baths and showers will forever change the way your bathroom looks. Call today for a free in-home consultation. I'm Mark Peterson, the Extreme Team at Horizon Credit Union, ready to take on the next task. If you know of a project that needs an Extreme Team makeover, go to KXOI.com to nominate it. 4 News Now Extreme Team brought to you by Horizon Credit Union. Water is an essential part of our everyday lives. It's important that Spokane acts wisely to preserve our precious water resources and not waste money on evaporation and the need for supplemental water infrastructure due to a burdened aquifer. Please avoid watering your lawn between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and limit watering to under two hours a day, three days a week. If we all do our part, we'll keep our river flowing strong, even in times of drought. Name this little rock and roll legend. Lupe Fiasco. The comedy game show where grandma knows best. Empire State of Mind is performed by what rapper? Jay-Z. Kelly Ripa hosts Generation Gap premieres Thursday on ABC. of your dreams. With Bath Planet, you can once again relax and enjoy the beauty of your new shower and bath. Our custom-built baths and showers will forever change the way your bathroom looks. Call today for a free in-home consultation. 4 News Now is brought to you by Summit Cancer Center. Well, the strongest thunderstorms right now are in northeastern Lincoln County, moving very slowly to the southwest. Here's the view from the station now. It's starting to look a little dark. I hope your windows are up <laughs> in the <laughs> parking lot. Meanwhile, it has been a wet evening up around Deer Park and Mead, that in the metro area where we've seen some of the heaviest weather also uh, around the Nine Mile area. And I'll be tracking those thunderstorms through the evening. Evening. My windows are down. I have my motorcycle you today. You better, oh. <laughs> Did you not watch the forecast I yesterday? I, could, I thought I could get home before they started. Well, yes. I was taking a risk. <laughs> <laughs>